Good evening. I hope you all enjoyed Sticks as much as I did. I think it's a very intelligent and skillfully made uh, film. Right now, we are uh, connecting, you know, all the European cities. They're all connecting and joining in for the uh, Q&A that we will have shortly with the director, Wolfgang Fischer. So I would like you uh, all to stay seated, except, of course, if you really have to go to the bathroom or if you just have to leave. <laughs> but uh, it would be really nice of you to all stay seated because it's definitely going to be a very interesting conversation about a movie uh, that you know has a lot raises a lot of questions and that will be uh, very interesting to hear the opinion of the director so um, I'm not sure if we're already connected I guess not yes okay great so let's get started um, ladies and gentlemen here in Brussels welcome to uh, bienvenue de nouveau and uh, to all the people joining us from Amsterdam, Athens, Baden, Bologna, Borash, uh, Copenhagen, and many more. Um, also from the Stockholm Film Festival, by the way, where uh, Stix is in the competition. I'd love to give you all uh, a warm welcome in your own language, but sadly I lack the uh, linguistical skills to do so, so I'll just stick to welcome. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the movie, and in just a second, the Austrian director, um, Wolfgang Fischer, will be joining us for a Q&A. Let me remind you that um, I will not be the only one asking him questions. You can also ask yours because long live democracy, right? Um, just take out your phones, tweet away uh, using this hashtag here, LuxPrize, or go to the LuxPrize Facebook page and just uh, type your question. So if you're all ready for it, I would like to uh, welcome our central guest for tonight. Please uh, give him a warm welcome, Mr. Wolfgang Fischer. Thank you very much. Hi, Mr. Fisher. Very nice to have you here. Um, you've probably done a lot of Q&As, but uh, maybe this is one of the biggest ones you've ever done because we're connected to uh, 19 cities, 19 theaters over 18 cities. So I won't even calculate how many people that is because you might get nervous. <laughs> OK. Um, so first of all, congratulations. I think it's a very, very interesting movie uh, that puts humanity and morality back at the center of the uh, migration issue. Um, is this a film you wanted to make or that you felt you had to make? So we started with, the, with writing the script nine years ago and on the first hand we wanted to make a movie about ourselves and to raise the question who are we, who do we want to be, who do we have to be and which kinds of choices do we have if we are in a dilemma as our main actress, main character and the second approach was for sure to make a movie about migration because migration will be that theme which will follow us the next decades and that was right from the beginning clear to make a movie about migration as well. Maybe before we get into the politics of the situation, uh, could you talk a little bit about the specific uh, practical questions because of course you're shooting a movie at sea, I mean the, the story is supposed to take place at sea, at high sea. Um, how complicated is that for you as a director? And didn't like anyone warn you that shooting at sea is <laughs> supposed to be horrible? I'm very fond of the ocean and I was very fond of this hostile world. But I have to admit, I didn't know anything about sailing before the movie. I just wanted to make a movie out in this world. And it all began with my DOP, Benedict Neunfels, and we were on a small lake near Berlin and we did a small sailing course and we were sitting in these small boats and we thought, wow, it feels good, it's nice. But then we found ourselves in front of Malta in a perfect storm with wind force 8, force 9. So we had to practice a lot and to become pros on all levels and all the, my director's colleague, they warned me, don't do it, you can't control the ocean, it does what it wants. And the main approach was to shoot everything in reality. So the movie you have seen, 90% of the entire movie was shot on open water. We didn't use any CGI, no special effects. So everything you've seen was shot in reality. In reality, wow, that's pretty amazing because a lot of films that shoot at sea try to use CGI or go a lot in studios. And so you try to avoid that. That's very impressive. Um, Maybe I was also wondering, uh, why did you choose to have a female protagonist for this story? You could have just as well chosen a, a man, but maybe we've seen that quite a lot before. 
Ah, that was also quite clear from the beginning to show a strong woman to go on an adventure with a very strong woman and she's an emergency doctor, so she's a professional helper. She has sworn the hypocritic oath, so it's her duty to help. And she's a professional sailor solo woman. And that was quite difficult to find the main actress for this movie because it's a very physical movie with no dialogue. So you see just a woman on her own there is no antagonist, there's no language, there's no music, and this extras has to go for the whole movie, 90 minutes. And that was quite difficult to find the right person for this movie, and we did a big casting all over Europe, and luckily we found Susanne Wolf, and Susanne Wolf is doing mainly theater, so she is a very physical actress, and she has a small sailing course just for lakes as well, but she was familiar with water and then she has to become a solar sailor woman and she has to become an emergency doctor. So we had to train a lot with her and we went to the northern Atlantic with her and we sailed through storms with her and she had to find out how to steer the sailing boat and on the other hand she has to become an emergency doctor and she went with emergency doctor in the ambulance on rescue missions, so that she knows how to treat victims, how to talk to them, so that you have got the feeling she knows how to help. And that was very important for the casting. Definitely. Um, is the story based on maybe not like exactly uh, true events, but is it based on, let's say, common events, things that tend to occur in real life? It's based on facts but it's uh, fiction. So we did a lot of research and I have to add, all the people you've seen in the movie, all the fireworkers, rescue team in the beginning at the accident, they were real fireworkers and real rescue teams. And the soldiers on the Coast Guard ship, they were real soldiers from the Maltese army. And they go out on rescue missions. And the people on the boat, which is going to sink, are human beings who did the dangerous crossing over the ocean. And for us it was so important to know everything from any perspective concerning this horrible theme. And then there is the next question, how to find the second main character, Kingsley. And for us it was clear in the beginning, right from the beginning, this has to be a person who knows Africa very well. And a friend of mine, Tom Tikwa, the director, he has an organization called One Fine Day in, and he built this organization in Nairobi, in the slums of Nairobi. And this organization has got schools and in these schools, the children from the slums in Nairobi, they can explore their creativity. So we went there in order to do the casting. And then we found Gideon. And Gideon, he has never been to the ocean. He didn't know how to swim. So he had to train swimming with us and he did this crazy journey with us and I have to thank him from this point, from this moment for his courage, for his will to go on this incredible journey with us. And what happened now, he was in two castings from, for a Hollywood movie and right now he's playing the main role in a Spanish feature film. And I have got a message for you, Mia. Just for a moment. So this is from Gideon. In the beginning, being, being on a boat was really the worst thing. I've never been by the sea before. I never swam. I was never abroad. There were many firsts for me with this film. I learned to do, be disciplined, patient and tolerant. But it was fun and everybody became family. For the people watching this film, I wish their hearts are open for other people. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Beautiful. Before we give the, uh, the microphone to the audience, um, I just wanted to ask about maybe the political side of things, because uh, Stix is now nominated for the Lux Film Prize, which is a film prize by the European Parliament. Um, and at the same time, I have the impression the film is kind of a criticism of the policy that that same European Union, let's say, um, has uh, been following for the last, last few years? 
Yeah, it's for me it's a disaster when we think about it that we wrote the script nine years ago and what happened in these nine years, nothing. And it, the situation goes even worse and it's nearly, if you watch the movie, you've got the impression that we did a documentary which was shot two weeks ago. And what happened now, all the NGO ships are stuck in the harbors, the captains partly, they have to go to court. And it's a bizarre situation, it's quite shocking that nothing has changed, but you can see also that film can be a very powerful force and we go with the movie to that place where the decisions are going to be made. So we are open up an emotional dialogue and for that reason we are all very proud of the team of Sticks to make this happen and that's a good possibility and I think that's the first step to lead a dialogue, that's the first step in the right direction that we sit here and talk right now about this horrible to topic. All right, I'd like to hear from the audience right now. I don't know if anyone here in Brussels has a question. Uh -huh, someone over there. Could we have a microphone? Yes, there's one coming right over there. For the lady here on the, yeah. Maybe just raise your hand, yeah. The microphone's not working yet. <laughs> Maybe just shout your question and I will uh, repeat it. But uh, what is... Could, could you just start from the beginning? Because okay. now the mic is working. Uh, you said uh, you don't uh, believe or you prefer to don't have be dialogue in the movie and I really like it. But I am wondering why you decide to use it when uh, the Rwandan guy arrived to the boat. For me, I was prefer to don't be any dialogue yeah, between the doctor and uh, him, still only the eyes contact as a human being, I think, and more reality, maybe. No? Uh, what is the question? My question is, uh, why you decide to use dialogue I mean, between the Rwandan guy, I don't know what's his name, mm, and Kingsley. the doctor? So, for me, for sure, we want, don't, didn't want to use any dialogue, but there is a situation when you approach somebody that you start to talk. It's not much dialogue, but for me it was necessary that these two people lead a discussion about the situation they are in and also to get to know in which struggle Kingsley is, that he has got relatives on the other board and it would be for me kind of manieristic if you cut the lines of both of them and I thought they're very necessary. Okay, I'll just take a question from Facebook right now. Um, a lot of people seem to be asking about the title of the movie, Styx. Why did you choose that specific title? Because it's a mythological yeah. charge name. So Styx comes from the Greek mythology and it's the river of death and it divides the region, uh, it divides the region from the living and the death and we're living in these parallel worlds and for me this title suits perfectly to tell the story of Styx, to tell the story of this dilemma, our main actress is thrown in and she's thrown in the river of sticks and what does it mean? I mean Achill was in the river of sticks and what happens with our main actress, with our main actor, if she enters the river of sticks? Exactly and that's also where her profession comes in I guess, she's an emergency doctor, how and why did you decide to you know give her that profession? I was very impressed by, by the main act, act, actor, so of uh, the main character, because she's two steps ahead, so she knows how help is functions. I don't know it, and I admire her for that, because she can, it seems to be that she has got everything under control in the beginning, and also at the beginning when she sees the other boat, you think she's capable to do something, she's capable to help these people, and also, she has got the skills to go in this hostile world, to conquer storms, to conquer everything. But then there's something worse than the perfect storm. There's something else out there and that was important for us to show it. Definitely. Um, I have uh, a question from Jakub um, on Twitter. Um, and it's about this dilemma that the main character faces to help or not. 
to save or to sail away. Um, it's something that, you know, it's very relatable for a lot of people, I guess. Did you ever, um, in connection to that migration crisis, have some kind of personal dilemma like that? Not in this horrible situation like we sh we've seen it in the movie, but for me, more or less, it's an every everyday situation. If we go on a motorway and there's an accident in front of us, are we going to stop or are we going further? And if we go further, that's a decision we have to take the consequences of. And it's a similar situation. And we see, on the one hand, how helpless functions in the heart of Europe when we watch the accident and what is going on at the borders, at the ocean, around Europe. And to show up the contrast, that was important. But I have never been in such a situation. But I was talking to sailors and they were in a similar situation. I was talking to one, he was out in the ocean with his boat and it was night and he knew there is a boat in danger and there are people in danger but he was alone and he turned off the lights and he went away and I can understand it and that's the reason why we can't solve this problem alone. We have to stand so shoulder by shoulder to solve this terrible issue. Let me just check if there's any questions in this theater here in Brussels, in Bozach. Yes, I have some. I have two people, actually. Uh, let's go to the lady in white first. Can we have the microphone? Thank you. I, I'm not sure it's a question, but I am proud that the European Parliament and the creative, that the culture and education committee that I sit on supports this, right? Thank you. And there might be, there's a lot of things to be critical about the EU, but we're supporting culture and we're still calling out for culture to have more money. And it makes things like this possible. And it is totally open to any kind of film. So um, I think it's fine to criticize the EU. But you know, today in the Culture and Education Committee, I was supporting a project that had worked with refugees who were making a scarf of solidarity. And the MEPs who care about Europe, they're in that bloody committee, and they're standing up against the fascists, against the National Front. So some people are taking the space, yeah, because that's where the battle is, folks, okay? That's where the battle is. It's the right wing, it's the extremists, because they don't want to hear this story, mm. right? They don't want to hear it. Yeah. So I'm really proud that Boza is supporting this, that we in the Culture and Education Committee support it, that the European Parliament still supports it. And I hope next year, in the next iteration of the Parliament, it will be supported, because it's going to be even more challenging. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maybe if I can just jump onto that same subject. Next year, there's European elections. Um, what should happen, according to you? I mean. If you watch this film, then do you hope to influence people when they go vote? And in what direction? For sure. I mean, we all wish it. The whole entire team would like, because we, we, we could talk to so many people. We could talk to NGOs. We could talk to human beings who had to escape, who did the dangerous crossing over the ocean. And there has to be something done that we have to stop this. That's impossible. But. Actually, I'm not a politician. I mean, I did this movie and I'm a filmmaker, but for me it was important to raise the right questions and to ask ourselves, do we really want to keep on going like this? I don't know if we can afford this kind of attitude in the 21st century. Okay, I'm going, going to go back to uh, Facebook and Twitter. There's a lot of questions about the symbols you used, and uh, mainly the monkey in the beginning of the movie, and also the bird on the boat. So I, I would like to hear from you what you meant by that. Or So the apes in the beginning, the cheaper the apes. So it was also clear in the beginning that we wanted to start a journey in Gibraltar, and Gibraltar, there are the columns of Hercules, also in the Greek mythology. It's the end of Europe. And in Gibraltar, there are the, the Gibraltar apes. And there's this big myth that if these apes disappearing, Gibraltar goes back to Spain. And it's such an issue, there's a ministry for apes. And it's even worse if you hit a, an ape than a human being by car. And the fines are horrible. And I like the, the image very much, that you see these apes running through town, there are no human beings, 
and maybe nature is stronger than all of us and maybe you've got the feeling that the world is a little bit out of balance and I liked it very much to start with this image in the beginning. Okay. Uh, any questions in the audience? I thought there was someone else uh, who wanted to ask a question over there. Maybe the lady over there, but I don't know. Maybe your question has been as answered already. Let's have the microphone for the lady over there, please. <laughs> well, okay, so please forgive my English because it's not very really good, but uh, I just wanted to turn to the subject you were saying. You were alluding to the fact that you met a sailor who actually ran away and I'm, I'm extremely surprised because I'm a sailor myself and rule number one among sailors is you have no option but to rescue a vessel which is in distress. Yeah. So I'm really surprised and I think there should be no question about it. And I think the, the fact that you already asked the question potentially is a problem because there should be no option. That's right. That's my opinion as well. But you see what's going on right now in the ocean nowadays. And this international sea law is not in charge anymore. If you watch that people are in danger and nobody's coming in order to help them. Because well, this is politics. And this is the reaction of the politics and the country has not, are not taking this problem in charge, which is, uh, uh, of course, the main issue. But international law at sea, you, you are really required to rescue people. There's no, no other possibility. That's right. But you see also the tank ship and the, the container vessel in the film, and it's based on facts that they also avoid these parts where there are people in danger and they got kind of also on the navigation systems, they got the informa information that this is an uncertain area, it's dangerous, you shouldn't go there. And then they turn around and they don't go there in order to help. I know, but your main character, even she, I mean, she's, she's actually not rescuing them. But for an emergency doctor, the first rule is to save your, your life first before you take action. So if it's you, too dangerous for your own life, you can't go into action. That's the golden rule of an emergency doctor. I know, but in this case, I find it debatable anyway. Sure, I mean, it's a dilemma. Maybe she was... And especially because she was a doctor. Yeah, and she... Maybe she was afraid, and, and that's the dilemma we have to find out for ourselves. And that's the reason why we wanted to raise the question. How would, how would we react in this kind of situation? And that's what makes movies interesting, I guess, yeah. the fact that there is a debate around it, which we're Thank you, we're having and congratulations for the movie. It's, thank you. It's really stunning. Thank you very much. Raising so many questions. And thank you for your question. Um, also on, on, on Twitter, but maybe it's, it's um, you know, uh, good in this context. Uh, Jakub on Twitter also asks, uh, did you get negative comments or reactions to the film? Because, of course, it is a very sensitive matter. So, Till now, no. I mean, there's a big empathy and we have screenings all over the world now with the movie. And mainly, I've got a kind of reaction that people told me they know all these terrible issues from the newspapers, from TV news, and they told me uh, uh, that they, are, they understand it, but there is no empathy anymore when they, they see the news. But after the movie, they had a certain emotional impact, and they could understand it emotionally. And that was very important for us, and to lead the discussion, an emotional dialogue after the movie, and not that we are just dealing with facts and numbers. And that was important for us mm -hmm. to create a certain empathy. Because is, is, is that also what you're trying to show when, for example, you show these rescue workers in like the, the, the white overalls and there's talk about contamination and there's like this fear of being contaminated by these people, which is quite the opposite of empathy, probably. I mean, these soldiers on the Coast Guard ship, as I mentioned before, they were real soldiers and that belongs to their uniforms. But you see also that one soldier is standing on the railing, it's too much for them. And these people are in the front row and 
some of them are partly heavily traumatized from their experiences and it's easy just to blame the bad Coast Guard. And they told me they also want to go out and rescue the people, but they have to wait for green light and there's a big bureaucracy behind. And for us, it was important not to blame anybody in the movie and not to say this is the bad Coast Guard and that's too easy because it's a very complex theme and the main part was to raise the right questions. Um, there's a lot of questions on social media about um, the perspective of the movie. Why do you choose to, sh to, to show this big issue from a Eurocentric perspective? Because there's, of course, also the other perspective. Uh, and then, if I may add something to that, why specifically a German perspective? Because mm. it can be quite symbolical, probably. Yeah, I like to start the journey in Germany. I'm living there, I'm based in Berlin. And to keep the perspective of the main actress all the time. We don't switch to another perspective. So we have to go through this adventure with our main actress and we don't cut to a subplot or something else. And we just keep there. And that's the reason why we, I, I hope so, we identify with our main character and we go through the same journey without any other plots, other stories. And we just keep her perspective to force the audience in the same situation. Exactly, that's what it's about, right? The identification of the European viewer, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any more questions from the audience here in Brussels? Not for, yes, there's a gentleman over there. Could we get the microphone, please? Almost there. Well, first of all, I'm not a sailor, but it was clear that her decision was based on uh, run or die, or uh, it was clear that she was unable to put on her boat 350 people, even though she didn't know how many of them are, but they would die, all of them. But the question is about the system. She is supposed, uh, because her uh, profession is a doctor, she is supposed to save people, and the lifeguard is supposed to save people. Is there a symbolism, or maybe it's only me, who finds this a symbolism on mumbling or endless debate amongst the European members or European uh, institutions about should we or shouldn't we uh, uh, accept the migrants? Mm. Thank you. Yeah, for me it's especially in these kind of rescue missions because we, we, we talked a lot with NGOs when they were out and they had to wait like for hours, sometimes for days, that somebody's coming because nobody feels responsible for these people out in the ocean. And for us, that was the main part, to show in this place what's going on right now and who is going to be responsible for these people out in the ocean. And nowadays, the people are not dying in the ocean anymore. Nowadays, the people are dying in the desert and there are no cameras, there are no journalists, and that's the way we want to deal with the problem. We want to close the curtain, we want to close the door, and we don't want to see it anymore. And that's a weird attitude for me, and I can't accept this. Um, let's go back to a question from Twitter, uh, the main character. She keeps quite calm, actually, and rational throughout the film. Was that uh, your choice or the actress's choice? No, it was also right from the beginning clear that the character has to react like this. That's the reason why she is two steps ahead, because if I was in this situation, I would go hysterical or insane. And uh, for that, I, I admire her, that she's still trying to keep control. And how long can she bear this? How long can she bear the situation? And when does she lose control? And that's the big question also for her emotional arc in the movie. In that sense, isn't it also a movie about how we, as, uh, let's say, helpless citizens, kind of perceive this issue? Like, we try to, uh, you know, rationalize it, and then maybe at some point we realize this is just too big for us, and what should we do? That's the reason why I think we can't solve it all alone. We have to stand together. We have to stand shoulder to shoulder together. All the international states, we have to keep on going and find a solution, and it's too big for one alone. But maybe for all of us, it's possible to find a solution. So, elections, right? <laughs> um, let's go back to the audience. I see uh, a hand being raised over there in the back. Um, yes, the mic is making its way over there. 
its own personal journey over the ocean of people. That's two microphones. Oh, right? oh there's you. Hello? Oh. Hello. Hi. Um, the part where Kingsley threw her off the boat, I thought was a really important part of the movie and kind of a wake up call, like, hello, those are actually my family members um, mm -hmm. on the boat. And I was wondering if there was meaning in it for you and how you imagined that scene for the movie arc. For me, uh, for us, it was important that we show two equal persons and it's not one person who has to be thankful for being saved because he's also responsible for other people. And uh, we wanted to show two equal person in the middle of the ocean. One is going from north to south, one is going to south to north, and they meet in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and they're completely equal. Um, there's actually a lot of, um, let's say, parallels between uh, the main character and also the people on the boat, I guess, uh, starting with the fact that both of them seem to be looking for some kind of paradise. Yeah. She's looking for this island, which she considers paradise. They're looking for a better future in, in, in Europe or yeah. wherever. Was that a, you know, that's probably not a coincidence, I guess. Yeah. No, it's all about theme of paradise. What does it mean for us? And for our main actress, it's going to Ascension Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And the other people, they have another way of thinking about paradise. They need security and to show up the contrast between do these two kind of paradises that was also important for us. At a certain point she also says, um, I can't fit you all in my boat, which kind of echoes the very popular argument that we can't receive everyone in Europe. Um, how would you respond to that? That's probably the big question of the movie, I guess. Sure, I mean, <clears throat> We have to find a solution. I mean, I repeat myself all the time. And, but for one alone, it's maybe too big. But for all of us, maybe not. There's a possibility. And if you watch what's going on right now, also in Africa, it's 85% of the migration is inner Africa. 15% they want to go abroad. And we have to deal with this issue and also look concrete what's going on and who needs to be helped and secure, and how can we build these kind of lighthouse? I mean, I had a nice talk with um, Hubert Neudeck, who built the, the organization Kapanamur, and he was in the 70s in the ocean in order to help the Burmese people, and he said he was talking about these lighthouses and the existing these lighthouses. For example, Uganda, they took 1.4 million people, and they could go there and they're secure. And we have to build up these lighters, but now we cut the development money for this project and it doesn't function anymore and people are moving again. And that would be an idea to think about lighthouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, d there's also a lot of questions on social media uh, about do you see cinema really as a tool of political action? Is it that direct for you? It's a political movie, of course. and. I think I'm very proud that we sit here and lead this dialogue and that's great what movie can do and what movie can reach that we start to talk and we start to lead this emotional dialogue and for that reason that's something what cinema can do and for that reason for me cinema can be a very powerful force. Yeah. I'm going to go back to the audience in the back over there. There's someone who wants to ask a question. Um. First of all, congr congratulations for the movie. Um, I have one question. Um, I was actually quite surprised that the boy was keeping it rather calm given that he had just been saved and he was looking over the sea, he was seeing his family drown. Um, I wanted to ask whether you had problems how to design the character because also at some point I felt that unease that I was not being sympathetic anymore when, for example, he, he threw overboard uh, the, the water and, and the tools and so on. I started to feel uh, sort of ag aggressive towards the character, I was saying, why would he do that? He was being saved. And so I just wanted to know from you whether it was difficult for you to design the character in a way that he was angry enough, but that the audience can still sympathize with him. Would you think about this if it was a white boy? Yeah, well, difficult to imagine because he would 
probably not have been in the same situation. Mm -hmm. Honestly speaking. And I'm that's the reason why we built it like this. And we didn't want to have this devout character. And he has to be thankful because he's from Africa. And he also has, this, he has a strong will. And he has his family there. And he fights for his ideas. And that's the reason why we wanted to build up these two characters are equal. Okay. Some more questions from the audience? I think I saw someone else uh, wanting to ask a question, but maybe not anymore. Okay. Um, well, this is actually a question I think I asked you in the beginning, but why did you choose a woman as a protagonist? I'm not sure if you um, wanted to say something else about that, because is it, is it, is it, does it have a meaning? Because you wanted to show a strong woman, you said, but does it have a meaning that it's a woman? For me, it was important. It was just, it has not the meaning, but I like this strong woman character. And if we imagine that the, it was a man on the boat and going to a hostel world, it's a very archaic type of man and the sea. And for us, it was great to show a modern woman. She can bear solitude. She can be alone on the ocean. And she has got the skills to control this world. That was quite impressive, and that's the reason why we wanted to have a strong woman in the movie. Uh, maybe a question about Ascension Island, which is the ultimate goal for yeah. uh, the main character. Why did you choose, choose that specific mm. uh, goal for her? There's a lot of islands yeah. in the ocean. Yeah, but this is a very specific island, Ascension Island, and it's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. In former times, there were just rats. There, were, well, there was nothing, and then Charles Darwin came with his colleagues, and he collected plants from all over the world. And he migrated plants and planted them on an ascension island. And nowadays there's an artificial jungle, there's a climate, there's rain, and there are plants growing side by side with, with each other in surroundings that's not natural. And you see that migration in a way was successful and that, that's the reason why I like this idea of Ascension Island very much to build up an artificial paradise. Yeah, very symbolical choice then. Um, okay, we have one more question from Facebook um, from Hannah. So the scene where Susanna is saving Kingsley has, very, has a very motherly touch to it. Was it deliberate or is it only my feeling? Hannah asks. That it was so strong to keep him out of the water and that's because for me it was always a kind of cliche when you see somebody safe bring another person out of the ocean and you just stretch out the hand and you get him. And it's really very complicated to get somebody out of the water. And we wanted to show it that it's really difficult to save this bo young boy, what, is, what it is, an adult. It would be completely different and it's impossible. And with the boy it was really hard for her picture because she really had to save him in, in the movie. Yeah, exactly. Okay, do we have some more questions from our audience here in Bozar? Not immediately, I think. Then I'm g we're gonna call it a close then. It's been very, very interesting and thank you so much for uh, being here. Thank you to you two here in Brussels thank and also so the rest of uh, Europe. It's been great uh, that you could join in for this fantastic movie and the Q&A. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.